Well, GPP stands for generalized pustular psoriasis. It's not your typical brand of plaque psoriasis that your audience might be more familiar with. It's a flaring, chronic inflammation of the skin. And when there are flares, it's marked by red patches all over the body, widespread. And in those patches are pustules. Um, and people with GPP flares feel unwell. They have fatigue, arthritis, fever, and chills, and sometimes need to be hospitalized. And there is mortality associated with it. Because it's so rare, uh, people um, don't commonly walk into the dermatology office or any doctor's office with GPP. And most doctors probably have never seen a case. And dermatologists who are trained in it might only see at most one per year. So when a patient walks into the dermatology office with the signs and symptoms of GPP, other diagnoses need to be considered that may resemble this diagnosis. Tests might need to be run, particularly a skin biopsy, which involves taking a piece of the skin and looking under the microscope to nail down the diagnosis. It's really an equal opportunity disease. In most studies I've read, uh, you'll see more women, women affected than men. Uh, but both sexes can be affected. Uh, and uh, commonly, it's middle-aged adults who have their first flares in their 40s and 50s. But again, uh, young people, like when Brandon was first diagnosed, or older people can have flares too. So for me, I was a, a rare case where I had my very first flare-up when I was only 11 months old. I was just a little baby. Uh, it started out with the uh, rash and redness on my chest and quickly overnight spread to being on my arms and my back as well. Uh, from there, I was taken into a children's hospital where I was admitted and I was there for many months before I got a diagnosis. I had dozens of doctors, all different uh, specialty areas, come in, run tests and try to, you know, diagnose me. And finally, uh, I got the GPP diagnosis. Uh, for me, it's it's really all I've ever known is having GPP. I don't know how it would feel not to have it. And it was definitely difficult because it's such a rare and uncommon disease that there weren't any treatments specific to take care of it. Uh, nowadays, the treatments have gotten a lot better, but I still had to go through a lot of trial and error to find what worked. So the Unwearable Collection is a great art installation created by Bart Hess, um, and it's really a way of depicting some of the um, some of the GPP patients' versions of how their flares are living with GPP is. Uh, they cover the uncertainty of having GPP and not knowing when your next flare might come up, feeling, you know isolated and alone and having GPP and uh, the the danger of having GPP as well while showing like a flare blossoming like a wildflower all over your body. Well, first and foremost, you should identify a dermatologist in your community who you know ha knows how to treat, uh, identify and treat the condition. Um, and partners with you over the long haul. This is a lifelong disease, um, and therefore the relationship needs to be uh, enduring. Uh, it involves uh, chronic use of therapies that aren't stopped and started, but usually you're put on a therapy continuously to help prevent flares, prevent the unwellness and potentially the hospitalizations that can con be a consequence of untreated flares. Well, you can go to a great website called gppandme.com. At that website are patient testimonials, information about the disease, and um, a great link to uh, the art installation, the unwearable collection, actually a great video at that, at that link, which describes its creation uh, really in a very uh, um, impactful manner.